Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. So whilst you're in your game, you very well might want to run certain D&D style dice rolls for quests, for dialogue or anything like that. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. That when you interact with this NPC here, you must have a stat at a certain level before you can actually interact with him, otherwise he won't let you. And as an added bonus, we're also going to make it so he can negatively affect your stat. And we can do positive as well, it's dead easy. And that'll change how you react with him. So currently what I have is this NPC with a little sphere in front of him. He's going to be playing a fake game of Romans versus Spartans or something. When you walk up to him, we can start some dialogue here. Which basically comes up and says, why hello, would you like to play Romans and Spartans? You can say no, and he'll just say I sound like a bit of a fool now because he puts on a voice. If you say what it is, then he'll just explain it to you. And then at this point, he'll say you need a charisma of at least 10. Now, if we don't have a charisma at least 10, then I'll just quit the dialogue because that's going to be our first thing. We'll check the stats. The second thing is if we do have a charisma of 10, we're going to get two options. That sounds bad. And then he'll in, you'll insult him basically and it gives you a negative modifier, which we can add an event onto. Otherwise, we can say, yep, yeah, I have 10 charisma. And then he'll say, perfect, let's play. And then it'll just end. But you can do whatever you want with it. This is the premise I'm going to go with. So to start, we need a way to store the player's stats. Now, it could be really easy. And you could just go to your player, add it as a variable or a function or anything. And then that's it. But in my world, I want everybody to be able to have those stats, NPCs included. Now, you could add the variables to both the NPCs and the player, but then you'd have to have an if statement somewhere saying, if player or NPC do this, it's, it's weird. It could get very weird. So instead, what I'm going to do is, if you look at the top right of the blueprint, both of the parent classes for both of these are both characters. You might already have your own, but I'm going to create a new parent class, which is just a character, but it will contain all this similar code. So I'm going to open up my content drawer here and in my blueprints, just here, just in the base, I'm going to create a new blueprint of type character and I'm going to call it BP character base. So we're going to open this up. So you can see it's got all the normal stuff, the character movement, the mesh and everything. That's all fine. But what I'm going to do is jump into class settings and I'm going to tick abstract class. Now, what this does is it means we can only ever inherit from this. If we try to drag this out, you'll see we cannot drag this out. I can drag other blueprints out. But I cannot drag this out because it is an abstract class. We can only inherit from it. So now that we've done that, we can jump to the NPC. I can click class settings and I can change the parent class from character to BP character based the one we've just created. If you've already got your own base one, you don't need to do this. And I can do the exact same for the player. And what this is going to be used for is sharing variables that they both should have. Now, you might think, why aren't we using interfaces? Interfaces would be a good result, but we'd still have to implement the same logic twice, one on the NPC and one on the player. Interfaces only store functions. We need variables, we need storage. So that's why we're going to inherit from the same base. You'll notice nothing's changed. The game will still work completely fine. Yeah, it'll still work completely fine. I've still got my things. The NPCs are still reacting how they need to. But what it means we can do now is if we jump to the character base and we come down here and just create a variable here of stats and we'll just set it as a boolean for now when we jump into the npc or the player in the class defaults we now have the boolean available to both characters meaning we've got one central point of data absolutely perfect so i'm going to come into my blueprints folder and i'm going to create a new folder here called stats i'm going to go right click blueprints enum and i'm going to call it enum character stats and inside here you can populate all the different stats you want whether you're going fallout style with the special stats or you're going D, D style for this example i'm going to use the D, D stats of strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma then i can save that now jumping back into the bp base ba character base we can set the type of this to be our new enum like so and in order to be able to have more than one I'm going to change its type to a map and you'll see why we're going to use a map shortly make sure the second value is an integer so we can actually give the stats a value and then i'm going to add my stats into the element here i'm going to do it backwards so charisma wisdom there we go so i've now got all my stats in there with a default value of zero for now which is fine and then once i compile that you'll be able to go to the npc and to the player click class defaults and search for stat and you will see our stats are there and the reason we've used an enum is when we're later passing in which modifier we want to change, 
then we can easily just pass in the enum and grab the exact key we need. So that's how a map works with a key and a value. We'll search for the keys and it will give us the value. We can modify the value based on the keys. Super simple. So I'm going to come to my player class defaults and we'll search for his stats. And I'm just going to give him some arbitrary stats. 10 on the charisma because that's what he needs. There we go. Now that we have our dialogue, we need a check on these ones here to basically say you can't answer this until you have a charisma of 10 because I want the dialogue to just end when he says you need a charisma score of at least 10. So I'm going to come down to my narrative folder here and I'm going to create a new folder called conditions. And I'm going to right click blueprint class and I'm going to create a new blueprint based on a narrative condition called NC check stat. So inside the function here, I'm going to overwrite the check condition. So the way this check condition one works is all you need to simply do is change this value to true or false, and it will allow the node to either be shown or invisible. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell it which character you need to look for. So I'm going to add a variable and I'm going to call it character tag, and it'll be a type of name. The next thing we need to do is tell it what modifier to look for and what value it needs to be more than. So look for charisma more than 10. So we're going to add a modifier, a stat here, and I'm going to give it a type of enum stats. And then I'm going to add one more variable called value greater than, and that'll be a type of integer. Now that we have that, we can drag the character tag in and we can drag off from it and do get all actors of class with tag. And now it's also linked up the tag for us and we know the class is simply going to be our character base. From this, I'm just going to do a simple get here. You could do a for each loop if you want to check a group of people had more than it, but you'd have to figure out the logic for where you're putting the return node. If you were wanting to check a group of people, at least one of them has the value, then simply do a branch on every single one saying, do you have more than 10, for example? If they do, then return on that individual one instead. So now that we've dragged off from the single one, because that's what I want to do in this one, I'm going to drag off from here and do get stats like so. And then from here, we can drag off and finally do a, a find. And this find, we can plug in an enum, funnily enough, the one we've already stored, to what we're looking for, and it will give us the integer representation of it. In which case, we can drag from this and do a greater than or equal to, and we can drag in our value then and then plug it in and then return this value like so. And that's really it for the logic for checking. So it's going to find the character we give it, whether it's NPC or player. It's going to get their stats and find the stat that we're passing in. So in my case, it will be charisma. Then it will check that the value is greater than or equal to the amount and return true or false. If you wanted to do it the opposite way, saying you must have a value less than this amount, then you can just duplicate this condition or add in a value greater than or value less than and check the variables either way you want to do it. The only other thing we have to do is override the get display text here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a format text and I'm going to plug that in up here. Let it auto convert. And then the format text works by you typing whatever you want. And if you want a variable to be passed into it, add curly brace. So I'm going to do check curly brace stat close curly brace is more than curly brace value close curly brace. And now you can see it's given us two values. So for the stat, I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to drag across and do a enum to string and I'm going to plug that into the stat and then for the value greater than I'm just going to drag that straight into the value like so and now we can save and compile and with that super simple condition we can now come back to the dialogue and I can click my player sure I have 10 because I don't want him to say that if he hasn't got it I can do a check stat condition and the tag will be my player the stat will be charisma and the value greater than will be 10. So that will say you can only use this node if the player has a charisma more than 10. And I'm going to copy this and drag it down to this one as well. Now, if we save and compile, at the moment, the player has a charisma stat of 10. So I should be able to activate that node and go all the way and play the game. So you'll see he'll speak to you. Then we can say, sure, I have 10. Perfect. I'm right here. To play, you need a charisma score of at least 10. Fantastic. But if I have a stat less than 10, so say I have 9, I'm almost there, but not quite there, then he should just end the dialogue saying, you, you need more than 10, you can't play with me. And you can see... To play, you need a charisma score of at least 10.
the dialogue just ends because we don't have a charisma stat. Fantastic. Now, the only other thing we need to look at is in the dialogue, he can actually give you a negative modifier if you insult him. Now, if you say that sounds bad, you've insulted him. How dare you? You've got enough charisma, but you're not going to anymore. So I'm going to create a modifier that will allow us to change a user's stat. Now, I know in not many games, you will have a permanent stat change, but you can do anything you want with it. I'm just showing you how to do it. So in Blueprints Narrative Event, I'm going to right click Blueprint and I'm going to search for Narrative Event and I'm going to call it any modify stat. Now luckily, most of the code in our condition is reusable. So we can copy all of it like so, jump across to the modify stat. I'm going to overwrite the execute event, drag this off and I'm going to paste it in the middle here. Plug it in. You will see if a variable is great, it means it doesn't exist. We've not created it yet. So I can right click create variable, do the same for the stat. I'm going to create the value greater than as well value modification like so so now that we have the val current value of the stat we're looking for we can drag off from stats and we can add to it the way unreal's map works is if a value already exists such as our stat then it will update it so i can plug all this in and i can return true so we know what the key is going to be that's going to be our stat here and then the new value of it is going to be the current value we've got then I'm going to add to it our value modification like so. And then I can add that into it and then drag it along. Perfect. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is go to the get graph display text. I'm going to add our format text back in. And then I'm going to simply say modify stat by value. And I'm going to drag the stat in and I'm going to connect it up by enum to string. And the value will be our value modification like so. Now we can compile and save. So if we've done it correctly and we give him a ne negative attitude because we say something naughty to him, so I'm going to add an event here of modify stat and I'm going to set the characters tag to the player. That's who we're modifying. The charisma I will modify and I will do minus two like that. Now, if we compile and save, I'm going to set my player's charisma to be 10. So we do actually have enough charisma. But after he says something naughty to us, we shouldn't be able to play with him anymore because he'll say you need a charisma of 10. So we have a charisma of 10, but we're going to say that sounds bad. We don't want to play that silly blah, 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 kids games. Now an attitude like that will get you a negative modifier. And now we have been successfully negative modified. As you can see, we now have a negative modifier of eight. And we run back up the check condition. Yeah. Room to play, you need a charisma score of at least 10. There we go, we can't play anymore. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how in narrative you check stats and modify them. You can add as many stats as you wish. You can update them however you like. I hope this helps. If you've got any suggestions for tutorials or you need any help, please comment below. Please comment, like, comment and subscribe and I will Why, see you hello there, next sir. time. Would you like to play a game of Romans and Spartans?